So now I'd like to introduce Nigel Blischke. Uh, since joining Torbrek uh, Vintners in 2015, Nigel has become an integral part of the company's mission to be one of the world's great wine estates. Nigel looks after his 10, ten vineyards across Barossa, producing fruit for some of the region's best wines. His mantle is to protect history by nurturing precious old vines, while helping drive the evolution of the Australian wine community. Unwaveringly passionate, about producing premium grapes and wines, Nigel has worked for some big names, including Yolumbra and Peter Lehman. He's been highly active in the wine industry and in 2015 was chosen as one of 15 rising stars for Wine Australia's Future Leaders program. Future Leaders graduates are encouraged to innovate, question the status quo, and find new solutions to drive the Australian wine community forward. Nigel has embraced this mission, working to improve the industry he's been a part of for over 25 years. Thank you, Nigel. I'll let you get started. Just before I start my presentation, um, I've, I've been working in the technical viticulture since the mid-90s. I was very fortunate to work with Yolumba for 12 years and had access to a lot of uh, technology such as Centec environment, virus scans and um, the ability to look at some technology for years. So I've, I've been an advocate for this, uh, for technology in vineyards for many years. Um, and I, I, my journey at Torbrek started in 2015. Uh, I, I started work at the end of um, end of November uh, 2015. So I came into a, into the vineyards not knowing anything about what the vineyards are about. And I'm going to I, I, I'll use our descendant vineyard, which is at Marananga here in the Barossa, as a case study. Um, so I, when I got to the Torbrek vineyards, I was I, I really was very green, um, and I spent a, quite a bit of time trying to understand uh, what had happened in the past and, and um, identify any issues that were there. When I got to the vineyards, there, were, they were, there wasn't a lot of technology being used, um, but the Descendant Vineyard was one of our most important vineyards. This vineyard produces a wine called the Descendant Shiraz, which is, sells for around $125 a bottle. Um, it's uh, been classified in the Langton's classification as outstanding, so it's a pretty important product for the business. Um, so the vineyard was planted in 1994, so it's not an old vineyard, um, planted on some beautiful red uh, brown earth soils, mostly Syrah, 65%, with some other plantings of Grenache, Viognier, Marsan, Mataro and Roussan. Um, that picture was, I actually took that from uh, Barossa helicopters. I, I was showing a group of American um, visitors around the vineyard and I, we were flying over Marananga and I, I snapped that shot and I don't know how easy that is to see, but there's some areas that are really vigorous. I've got a little pointer up on there, if you look in here. So it was very variable. Um, and I guess this is where I started my journey, because that vineyard at that point, that was the 23rd of February, uh, and most of the vines were defoliated. Um, and 16 was a pretty good year in terms of yield. Um, and Clearly there were some issues going on in here, a couple of water leaks in here and here. Um, and and I, I, I was really quite shocked that this vineyard looked like it did. What, we were find, what I was actually seeing was there was very, really variable growth. Um, there was variability in quality, yield and vigour. Um, like I said, the, the, there was a lot of defoliation. And we really, I, I really, that, at that point, I realised that I had to sort of try and work out what had gone on with this vineyard. And I, I didn't know any of the history of the, how the vineyards were planted or, or how, what was going on in these areas. So we started off by doing some soil surveying um, and also looking at some uh, NDV, NDVI imagery uh, in, in, uh, at Verizon in 2017. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a range of low vigour and high vigour. And, and what, are the, what we end up starting to do was we did some soil testing in some of these areas to really identify what was driving that variability. And as it turned out, um, the soil testing that we did, there was a, where we had high vigour, we had better cation exchange dominated by calcium. Uh, and where the low vigour areas, we had uh, higher potassium and magnesium. Um, we also had some areas that were sa uh, affected by salinity. We had some sodic clays at depth. Um, so what we're seeing, there's some areas where had higher um, organic matter, or the, the high vigor areas had higher better organic matter, and the other areas had lower organic matter. Um, I won't go into the detail of what, there was a lot of 
we do a lot of work around the soils in this vineyard. As I said, there's some other factors involved in this. There was a, the, uh, the original soil, soil survey showed that there were some areas with salinity. Um, we had an aging, like aging uh, irrigation system. We had valves that weren't working and there was a bit of a lack of uh, maintenance on some of the irrigation systems. So we had leaks and, and we had a few issues with that. Um, we also discovered later on that some of the vineyard areas, the younger parts of the vineyard, hadn't been deep ripped. Um, so we had a, a limited uh, root zone in the area um, and there was a lot of utipa. Uh, the vineyard had actually been reworked uh, and there was a lot of big cuts. So we had a range of issues going on in the vineyard. Um, and you know, that, the use of the, the NDVI was a really important part of understanding where to look and what to try, because what we ended up discovering was that it wasn't just one factor leading to variability. And, and what that actually means, the variability, what meant that we, we ended up doing a lot of differential picking. We had some areas that were ripe and some that were green. Um, and that really obviously increased costs and some of the areas weren't delivering the quality that we were expecting. The, the, this pro, the vineyard, the Shiraz from this vineyard, the descendant Shiraz, um, tends to sell out really quickly. So there's also a missed opportunity. The more fruit we could get into that product, obviously the better value for the company. So, you know, there was a, a real incentive for us to, to try and lift the quality of, of what we were doing. Um, what did we do to fix the problems? Um, first thing we did, we, we did a lot of mid-row ripping uh, in 2016 and 2018. Um, we didn't have enough moisture in 17 to actually do it, so we actually uh, got a bulldozer in and deep ripped. We had added compost and gypsum into the rip marks um, to try and build up the soil. Um, we actually did a lot of, we had armed with our NDVI um, data, we actually walked the vineyard and flagged off the, the low vigor areas and the high vigor areas um, and then actually went through with our, our undervine mulcher, uh, undervine uh, spreader and, and did undervine mulching and put some compost and all that sort of stuff. We, we put some permanent sw uh, annual swards in. Um, and the other big thing is we, we the irrigation valving was, was starting to get pretty old. So we actually replaced a lot of valves and we had the opportunity to install a, an IC, a Motorola ICC irrigation controller, which allowed us to, to remotely um, turn on and off irrigation. And that was very vital. We, we were a small team at Torbrek. Uh, we have nine, at that stage we had 10 vineyards spaced between Lindock and Nuriukta. Um, so we do a lot of traveling and being a small team, it was, it was quite difficult to get across the ground. So having that ability to um, automate um, also allowed us to water at night. So we're getting, better infil we're getting better water use efficiency by doing that. So there were some real practical um, benefits for in taking on that technology. Um, and it also allowed us to you know, that do a better job of irrigating um, with a small team. So that was a big investment in ag tech at that point in time. And, and, and obviously that's expensive, but it was worthwhile just to make our job a bit more efficient. So after doing that, we, most of that work was done in 2017. Um, so we did the, we did the uh, flyover again in 2017 and 2018. This is part of the descended vineyard. Um, this is actually Shiraz here. You can see this area, just to point out, the soils were really influential in this vineyard. This area through here has got saline subsoils. This area here is actually high in potassium and magnesium. Um, where this high vigor area was, or used to be, there used to be a piggery next door. And what we discovered 30 years ago, or probably 40 years now, they used to put all their pig manure in a pile in that area. They then surrounded that with uh, bales of straw um, to stop the smell from blowing around. So when you actually look into it, this was actually high in organic matter and, and very nutritious soil. Also a little bit deeper. This end here was um, naturally high in, uh, in magnesium and potassium, so it actually had pretty poor structure. So we, we had tried to address those by putting in inputs on that. We, ad we addressed those issues. And if you look at that area particularly, you can see that was actually a higher vigor area. That had remained pretty stable but these really low big areas would actually improved quite markedly. Um, so we, we, we felt we had a really good result in actually addressing those issues. So to give you an idea, the, in 2016-17, we had um, pretty high rainfall. We had about 480 mils during our growing season. It was a pretty kind season. Um, 
2018 was actually quite a dry season um, and yields overall were down. We, were, we managed to actually increase the yields between 30 and 105 per cent. So we were pretty happy we, and the quality of that wine um, is exceptional. So, and in 2017, because of uh, the vigour issues, we actually differentially picked uh, the Shiraz on those vineyards because there was such a range. In 18, we we're actually able to pick it in one hit. So it actually we'd saved ourselves a bit of money. Um, the non-mulch areas where we didn't put on the higher inputs, um, they improved only by about five percent. So yeah, like saying after the success of what we thought was success of 2018, 2019, 20 really smashed us. We had two of the driest years on record. We had a frost in 2019. 2020, the set was absolutely appalling. We had hot, dry conditions uh, in flowering, uh, and our yields were well halved on what they were. Um, and you know, after 18, we could, have, we could have sat back and said, "Oh, that's great. We've we've fixed the problem." But unfortunately, the very the climate really, you know, put us back in our place. And if you look at the bigger maps from 19, you can see that there is a the vineyard bigger has just dropped, you know, and that's when we really started to look at irrigation as being, you know, did we put enough water on? What was the timing of that irrigation? Um, and as you can see, we still had issues with the main line in this block runs along the middle. Um, actually, where we'd done deep ripping, we'd actually had a lot of damage from the uh, bulldozer. <laughs> um, and so we had leaking valves, uh, another main line here. Um, there, there's a few issues. Um, one of the other things, I'll just go back. With this particular, the, when I talk about, um, so this vineyard here was planted in 1994, 95. The vineyard here was planted in 2007. And this vineyard here was also planted in 2007. That vineyard, that vineyard if you look, go, we go back to the, uh, one of the issues that we also identified by doing this, this using this technology, you can see this end of the vineyard is actually uh, quite vigorous in, in 2017. This end isn't. One of the things is a slope running down that hill. One of the things we discovered that the, there's two valves in this vineyard and we were irrigating the whole lot in one hit. And so what we also discovered was that the, this end was down slope was getting more irrigation. So the uniformity in this vineyard was actually quite um, out. Um, this vineyard here, we discovered later that when they dug out the winery in 2007, they put all the topsoil down this end of the vineyard. So this part of the vineyard was excessively vigorous. This part wasn't, and it hadn't been deep ripped. So there's some other issues that go into, you know, the, how, which drive these, the problems that we were seeing. And when we got to 2019, there's a point where you have to choose between trying to fix something and starting again. So in this vineyard, we actually decided to pull it out. But we really wanted to work with this vineyard. And I, through our work, we, we'd realised that we needed to keep, keep water up to this block. It had a very limited root zone. It's only about 50 centimetres before you hit clay and the, the vine roots, are, there's only a 50 centimetre root zone. So we think we actually, we were actually doing quite a good job. We'd, we'd improved the uniformity in this vineyard, um, but that, that was one of the, the sites that we really had to, it was really difficult to maintain leaf health. Um, and obviously that, that, so that was part of the, our thinking around irrigation. We really started to see that we needed to get better at irrigation. So that's when we started talking with the guys from Swan Systems. We were looking for a system to be able to, to monitor and, and, and forecast when we needed our irrigation. So despite the improvements with our soil health and irriga irrigation management um, timing remained we a weakness for us. So we really looked at, we started to have discussions with Swan Systems. Um, and although, for those who don't, it's a, it's a computer-based um, irrigation management platform. Um, and it allowed us to integrate. We'd, we'd spent money on irrigation controllers. We had soil moisture monitoring. One of the things we did after, when I first started, we, had, we were using um, a diviner, which we had to go do manually. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the things we wanted to do was get some continuously logging soil moisture, which we put in, um, in, in our system so we could actually watch the soil moisture. But we were trying to, we were looking for how to integrate all this, and we had weather stations, so we had all the dark, we had a whole heap of technology in our vineyards, and we wanted to wanted a system where we could, we could incorporate all that together and use that data. 
because we were building up a lot of data. And Swan Systems was a, you know, had a, had a system that we could actually take all that information and use it to our advantage. And it also has a weather forecasting um, facility so we can actually track where our vines are at and, and actually make some better decisions. Um, so we first trialled Swan Systems in 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 season, and this year's been our first full season with the, with the system. You know, one of the things I like about it is quite simple. It's very um, visual. So we, we, without going too much into the detail of Swan Systems, they're actually here today. So John, I think he's here somewhere. <laughs> so it'd be worth having a talk to him if, you, if you're doing irrigation. But um, we really like the way we could actually look at the, it's a visual system. It tracks the, the soil moisture is brought into the, into the visual, um, da, uh, sorry, the dashboard. Uh, we can also map uh, rainfall and also predicts where the soil moisture is going to go. Um, we also get a fraction about so the, the plant health. So the, we're, with the, we have satellite imagery. We'd obviously been doing the NDVI. We can now look um, at that at, uh, in the season, current season and also go back and compare how the vines are performing. Um, so that was, that's been, this year we really had the chance to, to use it. One of the things, trying to grow, we're trying to grow a really premium product, so we're looking to try and put some stress on our anti Shiraz particularly. Um, but in that, within that vineyard, we've got whites. So we do have a very different strategy for whites to reds. So again, trying to, we're, we're able to actually look at individual blocks in this system, um, which is really beneficial when you're trying to, to grow multiple varieties. And certainly end uses, we have you know, our younger vineyards are generally targeted at a lower end point, so we're looking at different yields as well. So we can also factor that into that, into that, that expert system, the Swan Systems, um, and, and set different coefficients for the vigour that we're looking for. So that's really important. Um, so, I, I, you know, from what our experience with it this year, you know, we've, it's allowed us to make better decisions regarding our timing. Um, it's easy to visualise as well. It actually gives you a um, it gives you a forecast of where the soil moisture is going to be. But as I said, I'm, I, we, a lot of that is in the past. We've looked at vine vigour. You know, we're trying not to irrigate Shiraz until it really slows down. Um, our aim is to dry grow. In 2017, we actually dry grew a lot of the Shiraz, uh, the older Shiraz patches on this vineyard. So the soils when it when we got the soils right, we can and we get a reasonable rainfall season, we can dry grow the vineyard. So again, we're not we're, we're we're really every year we take on its own merits. So in a good year, we can actually dry grow. So we're not trying to add inputs where we can. So that's um, so when I look at a system like this, I guess initially you're a little bit sceptical, saying, "Well, I'm trying to grow a premium product. Is it going to, you know, tell me to water all the time so that I'm going to change my my the, the quality of the wine and at Torbrek, every one of our parcels is kept separate, so I've got nowhere to hide. So our winemakers look at each parcel and they're saying, well, that's up to scratch or it's not. So again, I can't blend it away and you know, hide the, the quality. I have to deliver. So again, there's always a reluctance to change what you're doing. You know, I visually look at the vines, but what I can say is that the system and again, this is where we work very closely with John and the team at Swan Systems to get a coefficient that worked for our quality aspirations, because not everyone is going to be doing what we're doing. So um, again, we're looking at a pretty high-end product. Um, so we were able to balance up um, the, the, or the, the um, vegetative index to what we required, which was worked really well. Um, the health, we can also look at the satellite imagery. Unfortunately, this vineyard, um, I'd love to say to you that we've improved quality and improved yields, but in, on the 28th of October last year, we got hit by a hailstorm, um, which um, sort of took out between 25 and 50 to 70% yield. So we've had a really tough season. Um, so I can't tell you that we improved quality, but certainly uh, if we got, I was talking about that younger part of vineyard that had the um, irrigation that was a bit, um, uh, wasn't working properly. That vineyard was, um, we, we would often, it had often defoliated, even um, after our first season it defoliated, we were getting defoliation because it was on a knife edge. It was, had moisture one minute and then the next minute it was stressing out. So 
This year we were able to maintain the canopy, we were able to regrow our canopies after the hailstorm. So again, we were able to look at where, um, with the, 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 the satellite imagery, you can actually compare, say, October, you can then compare what was looking like in November. So again, it allowed us to really um, track where the vigour was going and if we could, and issues, if any issues came up, if there was any irrigation leaks, we could also see where the vigour was higher. So things like that as well. So it allowed us to, to be efficient and go to fix problems when they, when they arise. Um, yeah, so yeah, again, we're able to, we've been able to manage our blocks specifically. And again, there is, you know, the soil types change so rapidly in this vineyard, it's really important to be able to manage individual parts of the vineyard. And, and the younger blocks, we're, we're really hoping that once without hail, we're gonna be able to move those young vineyards into the descendant vineyard. Currently, we we're, we're, we're probably have a room for a, to double the amount of descendant Shiraz that we can produce. Um, so there's a real benefit if we can actually get this right. One, you know, the other thing about these systems, expert systems and, and swan systems particularly, is we can add in other sensors. And we were lucky enough to work with Nikki and Dave Gurner and the guys from Athena um, last year and install um, some Athena probes, thermal imaging cameras. Um, one of the, I guess, the holy grail of, for me, about monitoring vineyards is actually to monitor the vine. And this year we had the chance to trial the Athena, um, uh, and and that uh, takes a thermal imaging camera and monitors an individual vine to see what the and creates a, a vine water index. Um, so this year was our first year with a, with that system, and we were able to look at soil moisture. The Swan systems with their forecast of, um, you know, of where the, the vine water status is. And it's really interesting that we're seeing really good correlation between what our, our system, the Swan systems is saying to us, what we're seeing in the field uh, with what the Athena probes are telling us. Um, and, the, and our aim for that this year, again, is to, oh, for the next coming years, is to incorporate that into our, um, into our forecasting of irrigation. Um, Unfortunately, again, the, the hail, the block that we were working on was the, block, the young block of Shiraz, and that was the one that got the most smashed. So we can't say that we improved yield and quality, but uh, I think we're going to get there. Um, so it's, a, it's another bit of technology that's going to make our lives a lot easier and, and more efficient. Um, but again, we are about targeting quality, so it gives us another tool in the shed to, uh, to, to hit those targets consistently. Because one of the things, again, about with that business that I work in, you know, for us, wine quality is about consistency. It's about performing year in, year out. It's not about having a great vintage in 18 and, you know, then you have a few bad ones. And, you know, when you're trying to sell really high-priced wine, it has to be year in, year out. So, again, for me, the, the benefit of ag tech is about delivering consistency. Um, and that's what's going to keep us in the, in, the, in the game for the longer term. Um, so, and again, I'm, you know, I think any of the, the I'd, I'd highly recommend if you're in a situation where you, you've got limited resources, these, these tools can make your life a lot easier. Um, obviously, we, we, there ex, there's obviously expense in this and uh, we've tried to chunk it off in pieces. So I've been with Torbrex since 2015 and we've just tried to incorporate a little bit each year um, and, you know, certainly helps when you, uh, um, when you can do that rather than try and spend a lot of money on it. Swan Systems, you pay a, uh, a, a, a subscription fee, uh, and it's around $200 a block. So it's probably costing us uh, around 6000 a bit over 6000 a year. Um, uh, well, that's about tw uh, 13 hectares there. Again, I mean, we, we, we've got nine different sites, so we, we probably won't do them all at once, but I think, you know, given that, you know, the ability to... Uh, we've also got IC, the ICC, we've actually... In, put that onto a number of vineyards now, so it's quite transferable once you get set up with this. Just the, I just mentioned that I was talking to the Athena people just before. Um, after trialling the system on Torbrex vineyards, they're looking for some more growers to put the system into, hopefully funded by Wine Australia. So if you are interested in having this as a trial on your vineyard, 
this coming season, just let me know today and um, I'll get you on the list, all right? Because um, it's a good opportunity to trial it if um, it's been subsidised by Wine Australia. So let me know. Uh, my name is Ta from Microbiology Lab. I just very good thing you talk, but just want to ask, this one system is automatic system. You need any software to control your irrigation system or just manually? Um, it can, it's, it, the, there is operability to be able to link with it. It, it links into the, um, all our valves. So we can, there is an opportunity down the track to actually link that up and fully automate the system. So we could actually, it, once we get to a certain level, it can turn valves on. Um, so we, I mean, that, that we're, we're very lucky in that we have an ICC system which links to all our valves, so we can ma uh, automa automate that system. So we can, do, I can turn the irrigation system on from my phone. Um, and like I said, you know, when I started at Torbrick, we had vineyards that had 22 manual valves, and uh, I spent a lot of summers um, turning on and off valves. So, yeah, that would be the ultimate goal. I think at this stage we, we're not, not taking up that option um, because we do... You know, we'll, we'll, we really like to look at the season as it is and, and affect, do that uh, ourselves, basically. But there, it can do that. Um, and, and I think Athena, will, th these systems can, will be able to do that as well. Um, so, you know, again, having... There's many... I guess there's a number of systems there, but they do offer that ability. Um, now with digital technology, so that we've got radio link valves and a lot of valves, um, and where we've got... Um, we have got inline valves, but you know, again, they're all automated, and they link back to our pumps, and and we can turn them on, man, um, you know, that way. So that's pretty handy. Colin. Colin. <coughs> uh, we use bill water, uh, so I think whatever the bill is, 400 parts, 300, 400 parts. So. Salt's the enemy of the valley. Yeah. Um, do you see salt affecting this technology? You can water when it says you want water. Mm. What does that leave? A bucket of salt sitting around your roots. Yeah. We've actually changed our system in one of our patches where we water far more frequently to try and keep the salt flushing through. Um, is there anything in this technology that's addressing the, the enemy? Um, I, I guess you've got to look at the whole system. We, we started the process looking at the soils. Um, we were seeing salt in the PDO analysis. We did uh, soil biology testing. Um, we, we put a lot of organic matter on the soils to try and build up in, like the organic matter and improve infiltration. So we're looking at, um, I guess, a lot of factors to try and... We can't get rid of the salt. We can try and leach the salt. Again, the better the soil structure we have, the better leaching we're going to have. Um, we, one of the benefits of actually using a... These autom this automation is that we can turn the irrigation on at night and irrigate at night where we get better better infiltration into the ground when there's not being evaporated. So that helps with our soil moistures. Um, again, a lot of it's a lot of that uh, subsoil salt has been there for many years. So we can only address what we can address. You can't get rid of it, unfortunately. But the better you do your irrigation, probably the more chance you're going to get for leaching. And again, the more you build up your soils, you get more water into your soils. Can't make it rain, unfortunately. But yeah, we try and we we try and use the, obviously bill water to not put any as much salt on. But yeah, I don't. I'm, I, it doesn't help. It's not going to say it's change that soil soil influence or salt influence. No, but maybe the next step in technology is to measure soil salinity along with moisture. Yeah, I, I think one of the For things the I'd like to see is about it. Like, we've got soils that range from this deep to in the same row to a meter and a half of root zone. Um, I'd like to see an irrigation system that waters ver variably waters. <laughs> so you, where we've got shallow soils, I'll water a lot more. Or where I've got salt, you can actually put more water on. But then, convolutely at the other end, where it's really vigorous, it puts out half the amount of water. So I don't know whether that's another, but that's something that'd be ideal. Thank you.